Hey everyone, this is a refresher for Cosmic Encounter. The refresher series is meant for people who have already played the game, but want to refresh their memory on how to play. You win the game by having five colonies on five different planets that are outside of your home system. To set up the game, place the warp and the hyperspace gate on the table. Then each player takes the plants and ships of that color, placing four ships on each planet. After that, place the colony markers on the space marked zero. Then prepare the destiny deck, removing any player colors that are not being used. Then shuffle the flare cards and deal two to each player. Each player then takes the alien cards that match the two flares that they have and they choose one to play as, placing that alien face down in front of them. Then take the flare cards and shuffle them into the cosmic deck. If you're playing with fewer than five players, add random flares to the deck until you have a total of 10. Then deal eight cards to each player from the cosmic deck. You can look at your own cards, but you can never show them to the other players. To select the first player, draw from the destiny deck until a player color is chosen, and then shuffle that card back into the destiny deck. So blue will go first and they'll have one encounter. Now players can reveal their aliens. The color at the top of the card shows the recommended skill level of the player using the alien. This shows you what role you need to be filling in order to use your alien power. This tells you if your power is optional or mandatory. And this shows you when your alien power can be used. Starting with the first player and then continuing clockwise, each player will have one or two encounters. If you win your first encounter or you make a successful deal, you can have a second encounter as long as you still have an encounter card left in your hand at the end of the first encounter. At the start of their turn, the offense will check their hand to make sure they have at least one encounter card. If they don't, they may play any cards they are able to play, then they discard their entire hand and draw eight new cards. If the offense runs out of encounter cards later in their turn, their turn immediately ends. There are seven phases in an encounter. In the regroup phase, you'll take one of your ships from the warp. In the destiny phase, you'll draw a destiny card, which will tell you who you're going to attack. In this case, it's green, so blue will have to attack one of green's planets. Blue will be the offense and green will be the defense. If you draw your own color, you can draw again, or you can attempt to drive a foreign colony off of one of your planets. Also, if you draw your own color and you have a planet with no colonies on it, you can automatically reestablish a colony on that planet and it counts as a successful encounter. The next phase is the launch phase, where you'll point the hyperspace gate at any one planet that's the same color as the destiny card that was drawn. You then send up to four ships from any of your colonies. These ships can be taken from the same colonies or different ones. If you attack a planet with no colonies on it, the defense has to defend with zero ships. The offense and defense are referred to as the main players. Colonies that are on the defense's planet that are not part of the home system are called bystanders. They don't count towards the defensive total and are not affected by the outcome. The next phase is the alliance phase where the offense and the defense ask for allies. First the offense invites allies, then the defense invites allies. Then starting with the player to the left side of the offense and going clockwise, each player will decide who they want to ally with, sending up to four ships. So in this situation, I could invite yellow as the offense. Let's say that green invites yellow as well. Now it's yellow's turn to decide who to ally with. And they will choose blue and they'll send up to four ships. If yellow had chosen to ally with green, they'd place their ships next to the green planet. The next phase is the planning phase, where the offense and defense will choose one encounter card from their hand, placing it face down in front of them. If the defense doesn't have any encounter cards in their hand, they reveal their hand, then they can play any cards that they're able to play. After that, they discard their entire hand and draw eight new cards. Then each player will simultaneously flip over their cards, and you'll see who wins the encounter. If both players reveal attack cards, you add the value of the card to the value of your ships. The offense has six plus the eight ships, so that would be 14. The defense has four plus the four ships, so that would be eight versus 14. The offense wins. If the offense wins, then the defender sends all their ships to the warp along with any allies that were defending. The offensive player moves their ships onto the planet along with any allies that helped, and then both of those colors would move up one point since they now have a foreign colony. If the defense wins the encounter, then the offense sends all their ships to the warp along with any offensive allies. The defense also wins ties. 
So for each ship an ally sent in, they can either take one of their own ships from the warp and place it on any one of their colonies, or they can take one card from the cosmic deck. So since yellow sent in two ships, they could take both of their ships back from the warp, they could grab two cards from the cosmic deck, or they could take one card and one ship from the warp. If both players reveal negotiate cards, then the allies send their ships back to any one of their colonies that they like. Then the offense and the defense have one minute to make a deal. If they're not able to make a deal, they each lose three ships of their choice. In a deal, you can trade cards or you can allow the other player to establish a colony on any planet where you have a colony. Or you can do a combination of both, allowing them to establish one colony and trading cards as well. There has to be at least one granted colony or one traded card for a deal to be successful. If a deal succeeds, then it counts as a successful encounter. Once negotiations start, you can send your offensive ships back to any one of your colonies that you like. If you play a negotiate card and the other player plays an attack card, you automatically lose, but you collect compensation. So for each ship that you lose to the warp for losing the encounter, you'll take one card from your opponent's hand at random. So here the blue player lost four ships, so they would take four cards at random from the green player's hand. If blue had an ally, the ally's ships would be sent to the warp, but they would not be able to collect compensation. Only the offense and defense can collect compensation. Now if the offense wins, they're able to have a second encounter as long as they have at least one encounter card in their hand. They would then draw a destiny card and proceed to go through all the phases as normal. Now I'll go over some of the other rules that you'll want to remember. If you need to draw a destiny card and there's only one left, don't draw it. Instead, shuffle all the destiny cards together to form a new deck. If the cosmic deck runs out of cards when you're drawing, shuffle the discard pile to form a new deck. If a player needs to draw a card from the cosmic deck and both the cosmic deck and the discard pile are empty, then a cosmic quake occurs. All players discard their hands, the discard pile is shuffled to make a new deck, and then 8 cards are dealt to each player. You can only land ships on colonies if you already have a colony there. So if this planet had 0 colonies, I wouldn't be able to land my ship there. If you lose 3 of your home planets, then you lose your alien power and you flip it upside down. If you somehow regain one of those planets, then you can immediately flip over your alien card and begin using your power again. You can only zap a power if it's been used. So if a power doesn't require it to be used, then the power can't be zapped. Flares cannot be used more than once per encounter, and a player may use no more than one flare per encounter. Also, the super flare must be used if you are that alien. Reinforcement cards can be played by the main player or the ally, and they can be added to either the offense or the defense in order to increase the total by the number on the card. Now I'll go over some of the variants in the game. To use the hazard deck, shuffle it and place it next to the warp during setup. Drawing one or more destiny cards that have a hazard warning causes a single hazard card to be drawn during the alliance phase before allies are invited. You can use the hazard token to show if there's a hazard warning in effect. Turn the hazard token to its red side whenever a destiny card with a hazard warning is drawn. A destiny card has a hazard warning if there are rings around the color at the top left and bottom right corners of the card. There are two types of hazard cards, temporary and permanent. Temporary hazards are discarded at the end of the current encounter to the hazard discard pile. Permanent hazards that have the red bar at the bottom of the card are not discarded unless a condition on that card or another says to do so. If you're playing with seven or eight players, shuffle the large group cosmic cards into the cosmic deck. These cards are marked with the large group symbol in the upper right and lower left corners and can be used with less than seven players if you want more randomness added to the cosmic deck. To use the reward deck, shuffle it and place it next to the warp during setup. If the deck runs out, shuffle the discard pile to form a new deck. The reward deck is accessed only in the context of collecting defender rewards. When a player receives defender rewards, they can draw some or all of the cards from the reward deck. Reward cards that are played go to the reward discard pile. Game effects that reference the deck must be interpreted as meaning only the cosmic deck. Things that happen later as a separate action, not specifically responding to the act of discarding, cannot retrieve cards from the discard pile. 
but there's a small window of opportunity after the cards are freshly discarded that they may be immediately retrieved. Kicker cards are placed face down during the planning phase before any encounter cards and you tell your opponent that you're going to use a kicker. You reveal your kicker when your encounter card is revealed. If a player plays an attack card with the kicker, the kicker multiplies that card by the kicker's value. So in this case, it's times two, so they would have 16 plus their three ships. If the player with the kicker plays a negotiate card, their compensation is multiplied by the kicker's value. If they would normally receive three cards as compensation, then they would receive six cards if they played a times two kicker. If there's a failed deal, the number of ships lost to the warp by the opposing player is multiplied by the kicker's value. And this player would lose just the normal amount of ships, which would be three. The reward cards have different backs than the cosmic deck cards. When taking cards from another player, you're allowed to see which card backs you're selecting. So when something specifies that cards are taken, discarded, at random, what this means is without seeing the faces of the cards. So if the green player was allowed to take one card at random from the blue player here, and this was their hand, they're able to see the card backs and they can decide which one they want to choose. To use space stations, set up the game normally, and then after hands are dealt, Shuffle the space station deck and deal one to each player. Each player places their space station card face up near their planets, takes the space station marker that corresponds to their card, and then places the marker so it fits against one of their planets. Then return the unused space station cards and markers back to the box. As long as a player has a colony on the planet with the attached space station, the player receives the benefit or has access to the ability listed on the card. The planet that has the attached space station doesn't need to be involved in an encounter in order for the player to use that space station's ability. If you lose all the ships on your planet with the space station, then you flip your space station card face down. Space stations can be traded as part of a deal, either in addition to cards and colonies or by themselves. A player receiving a space station attaches it to any one of their planets that doesn't have a space station. To use technologies, shuffle the technology deck and then deal two tech cards to each player after completing the normal game setup. Each player then picks one of these cards to keep and discards the other face up next to the technology deck. The selected tech card is placed face down in front of the player. At the start of any player's regroup phase, before the offense takes a ship from the warp, each player can research their tech card, complete their tech card, or do nothing. To research a tech card, you take one of your ships from any one of your colonies and you place it on the tech card. Once a ship is placed on a tech card, it cannot be removed until the tech card is completed. To complete a tech card, you turn your tech card face up when the number of ships researching the tech are equal or greater to the card's research number. Then you return the researching ships to any of your colonies. The completed tech can now be used and remains in play. If you turn over your tech card without having enough ships needed to research the tech, then the tech card is abandoned. The ships are then sent back to any of your colonies and you place the tech in the tech discard pile. If a player is eligible to have a second encounter during their turn, they can give up the opportunity to have a second encounter and instead obtain a new tech card. The player draws a number of tech cards equal to the current foreign colonies plus one, chooses one tech and discards the rest. So if it was the blue player's turn, they would draw two tech cards, choose the one that they like, and then discard the other. There's no limit to the amount of tech cards you can have, but you can only research or complete one tech card during each regroup phase. If the technology deck runs out, shuffle the discard pile to create a new deck. Ships that are researching tech cannot be involved in any encounters, but certain alien powers can affect them. That's Cosmic Encounter. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe for more Cosmic Tavern.